Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this webinar on the protected uh, cycle lanes proposed for St. Cronin's Avenue and Brackenstead Road in Swords. Thank you very much to those of you who have joined us this evening. And we know we have a number of people registered who will be joining us throughout the session. Um, and we ask for your patience if we come in uh, contact with any unlikely technical issues. My name is Roisin White and I'm a communications executive here at Fingal County Council. And I'll be your host for your, this webinar this evening, which is part of the public consultation. Tonight we'll present the proposed works to you and we look forward to taking your questions in just a short while. This webinar will be recorded and the recording will be made available on our website in the coming days for anyone who may have missed it or would like to share it with somebody else. This public consultation began on March 24th and will end on April 22nd. The reason for this long period is that we hope that as many people as possible who are interested in the proposed works for St Cronin's will share, uh, will, um, pardon me, will make a submission and review the details and drawings on the website. Um, during this time, submissions can be made by individuals or by groups, such as residents associations, who may wish to bring their comments together as one. And we welcome your views on every aspect of the proposal. You may be concerned about a particular area or overall you may have an interest in the wider scheme and your comments are welcomed on any area. You can tell us what you think at www.consult.fingal.ie. Every submission will be read by the project team and your feedback will be taken into account as the scheme is pro progressed. We begin shortly with a presentation from the project team, which is led by Breen Doris, Senior Executive Engineer here at Fingal County Council. And then, as I said, we'll move on to a short question and answer session. This online event is your opportunity to see exactly what impact the proposed works will have, to understand why Fingal County Council are proposing these works and to ask questions of the project team. And we're very much looking forward to answering those questions. So if you have one, please enter it in the Q&A box. You'll find the question and answer box in the right hand of your screen. If you pop your questions in there, we'll be reading them and we will read out and get through as many as possible during this time. Uh, we'd expect that lots of people will ask similar questions on a given topic and given that might happen we might paraphrase or merge together some questions in order to cover as many as possible in the time we have this evening. So if you don't hear your exact wording read aloud please don't be alarmed and be assured that a transcript of all questions exactly as written will be provided to the project team for their review after this session. As I said, in the unlikely event that we have any technical issues, please bear with us while we get them resolved. In the unlikely event that we do have a problem and the webinar might need to be restarted, please use your check your email with which you registered for this session as that's where we'll send a new link. Thank you very much for joining us. And I'm going to hand over now to Breen Doris, who'll be sharing some slides and talking you through the details of the scheme. Roisin, uh, thank you very much for the introductions this afternoon and welcome everybody to our webinar on protected cycle lanes for St Cronin's Avenue, Brackenstone Road and our Safer Routes to School programme outside St Cronin's National Schools. I'm just going to start sharing our slides here and we'll go through them in detail, which will outline the scope of the works involved and why we are doing it and why the proposed works are happening or are proposed in the, in the coming months. <clears throat> Just looking for a thumbs up from Roisin to say that we're sharing at this stage. And I think we are. So apologies, my head will be turning left to right here as I'm operating off two screens. But um, I suppose protected cycle in St Cronin's Avenue, Brackenstone Road and our Safe Routes to School programme. Uh, why are we doing this? We have existing cycle tracks on both Brackenstone Road, St Cronin's and our Safe Routes to School programme is slightly different, which I will go through in a few moments. But why are we doing our protected cycle lanes? I suppose is to make the existing cycle tracks that's there more attractive. Um, it's really an upgrade also of our footpaths and our road network within the area to make it more user friendly for all road users, not just our motorists, but also for our cyclists and pedestrians alike. Where's the project start and the project structure? It is the sanctioning authority as the National Roads Authority, who are also the funding body here under the Sustainable Transport Measures Grant. The sponsoring agency would be Fingal County Council, as in your local authority. The design and build contractor who is represented here tonight as well is GMC Utilities Group, and also the contract designers, Ronan O'Donovan, who are also present on the call to answer any of the queries later. The progress to date, well, what has happened and where are we at? We have secured the funding and the investment for the entire scheme. The detailed design for the scheme is substantially complete and that incorporates the Safer Routes to School programme, which is outside St Cronin's Junior and Senior Schools. The stakeholder engagement, we have already briefed our local councillors within the area who again would have informed yourselves. We have spoken both the, the principal and the deputy principal in both the junior and senior national schools with regard to the design and the proposals which are going to happen. We have been in touch as well with the local parish priest um, in the Brackenstown Parish Church and the Parish Centre. 
while we've also been in, in, in consultations with the doctor across the road. Dublin Bus and Swords Express are also on board with regard to the infrastructure and how that may affect them or otherwise. ESB networks for the reasons of down at the bottom end at Glen Allen Road where the substation is and any alterations we would have to the network. Uh, Fingal operations are both our traffic and parks department and all our internal stakeholders within Fingal. This is the non-statutory uh, non consultation process as Russian is outlined. Uh, it has started on the 25th of March and concludes on the 22nd of April and we would welcome your input into it and this is your chance I suppose both tonight and up to the 22nd to give us your thoughts and ideas. The project overview and description, what are we looking to do? We have over four kilometres of segregated cycle lanes which are on existing carriageways which we are upgrading. We are also, and that's along both St Cronin's Avenue, and you'll see the map on the right from the Glen Allen Road, Rathbeal Road Junction, right through to the junction with Brackenstone Road, and also from the Parkview roundabout, right through to the sword side of the school, the National Schools and Church there. So basically just to the east side of the junction, east side of the school. What are we doing? Upgrade four kilometres of cycle lane, as we said already, of the existing carriageway and construction of 280 metres of off-road two-way cycle lane. Upgrade the junctions and provide safer, comfortable and efficient crossing points for the vulnerable users. A new signalised Toucan crossing, which is basically a signalised junction crossing at the entrance to Swords Manor Football Club. And again, we'll show you an example of what that will look like. Incorporating the Safe Routes to School programme for St Cronin's Junior and Senior National Schools. And again, we look at the photo montage of what is proposed there. A new mini roundabout on St Cronin's Avenue at Liskean Junction to improve junction safety and the sight lanes and reduce the speed levels. Upgrade of the Ratbeal Road and Murrow Road intersections, including removal of the left-hand turning lane and improve safety for vulnerable road users, cyclists and pedestrians. We'll just take a step forward into the various elements of it and then we'll take St Cronin's Avenue initially. There's seven junction upgrades proposed, St Cronin's Avenue, entrance one, Valley View, St Cronin's Avenue, the second entrance, the Gallops, Liskean, Ardkean Park and Canley. Upgrade the intersections at the Rathbeal and Morrow Roads. Repair the damaged footpaths and installation of bollard and line marking. Buff coloured surface on the cycle lanes and where the conflict areas are, we'll have them in red. I suppose part of this project and a large part of this project is the junction upgrades and also the footpath repairs. The footpaths in the area are in quite poor condition. What we're looking to do is upgrade those where there's damaged footpaths, upgrade those and also do our junction upgrades with that. As you can see just in the bottom left hand picture where you have the damaged footpaths, the footpaths are quite cracked and, and in poor condition. And this I suppose to the right or to the middle here, what we have is an example of what our junction upgrades will look like. So again, we will be building out the radii and then putting in the level surface across the junction. So traffic coming up to it will automatically come to a stop have a look at, see the pedestrians or cyclists coming through, allow them priority to cross over and then come out and make their traffic movement into the traffic. What we can also see is the existing cycle paths here on St Cronin's Avenue. And this is what it will look like at the end of the day once we have the bollards in place. I suppose in this case, it does show a curb line there. We do not have a curb line. What we will have is our continuous white line, our bollards and so on. Roundabout at Liskean Junction, traffic calming measure to reduce vehicle speed, as we said earlier, is to improve traffic efficiency, uh, safe visibility for all road users and improve its pedestrian and cycle crossing point. Effectively on this junction coming out, it just doesn't align perpendicular to the existing road network. What we're looking to do is realign this junction slightly, but there is a bit of a sight line issue, I suppose, with Dublin bus, the bus stop down here. So we'll be altering this putting in a roundabout to slow the traffic coming up St Cronus or out here and to slow them down coming up past this area. That's the design proposal we can see here from the sketch on the right. The scope of the works on the Glen Allen Road, which is down at the bottom end along the ESB substation. At the moment we have on the Rathbeal Road, you would have noticed, I suppose, the footpaths and the cycle paths that was introduced there last year. And what we're trying to do is provide continuity with that where it goes round to the Laurelton estate and entrance where there is cycle paths further down on the Glen Allen Road. Effectively, what we're looking at doing here is keeping the line of trees on the outside 
and then creating our footpath and cycle paths inside between that and the palisade fence. The existing cycle lane coming down as you come towards Swords on the Rathbeal Road will be doing away with that left hand turn there for traffic to try and make more room for pedestrians and get pedestrians and cyclists around here safely. On the Brackenstown Road, we have a lot of works planned. I suppose part of that is, as we discussed earlier, the 280 metres of cycle path in the green area, I suppose from the top of St Cronin's Avenue back towards St Cronin's National School. And the reason for that is to facilitate the children coming up St Cronin's Avenue, they're not having to cross traffic or cross into the junction, that they have a safe access along this area right through to the school area itself. There's four junction upgrades planned here, which is Barwick Avenue, Ormond Avenue, Swords Manor, Avenue and Park Avenue. Segregated cycle lanes again on both sides of the road with bollards line marking and buff coloured surface, which is in existence at the moment. It's just upgrading those existing cycle paths. The new 280 metre off road two way cycle path, as just previously discussed, will come through here and we will basically incorporate that back into the Safer Routes to School programme further up at the school. Resurfacing of the poor condition carriageway, including upgrade of damaged bus bays and laybys and the new signalised crossing point at Swords Manor Pitches and Parklands. This is really what we're looking at at, the, at Swords Manor Parklands. The safe crossing here will form a toucan crossing, which will be signalised junction, again, with our tactile paving on either side, so it provides safe access across the road right at the junction going into the park. Where we're upgrading our bus bays, the bus bays along the route are in quite poor condition. The concrete is all broken up. The channel here needs repairing, replacing as well and planing out. So basically that's what we propose to do is to is to improve all this infrastructure at these at both all the bus stops along that route. The Safer Routes to School programme. This is more or less to make this a more comfortable area for our kids as they walk into school and out of school and, and take the the mayhem and panic out of what is currently there. The scheme is incorporated in St Cronin's Junior and National School. It provides an alternative and attractive means of travel to the school, as we discussed earlier, by putting in the green area and or putting in the, the cycle path through the green area. And the, what we're looking at is directly outside the school. You'll see by the top picture, that's the current image we have there. We're looking at the proposed montage at the bottom is building this up. It'll come level with the footpath. We'll have our pencil bollards as well for our school, which will identify it and our buff coloured surface and red coloured surfaces where the interaction areas are. This is an indicative image of what has been done in other places and other schools. And again, quite similarly, to give you an overall view as regards just where the raised platform is coming through. So what the motors would see as, as a part as a coming through. The next steps, well, where are we now and what are we doing? I suppose we have a, a number of submissions that have been submitted to date. We expect a number more. What we will then be doing is reviewing those submissions from the consultant through the consultation phase, which ends on the 22nd, so it'll be after that date. Review and verify the design. Road safety audits will have to be conducted on the design itself. Agree the program in the working phase and ongoing liaison then with the stakeholders, including yourselves. Road safety audit, monitoring the scheme for operation and product review and lessons learned. I suppose we have a number of steps really taken in this so far, whereas the submissions are all starting to come in. We are reviewing and reading every one of them. And at the end, we will be conducting a report which will report back to the members with in relation to how those submissions are dealt with and incorporated back into the scheme. That's it from me, folks. I think we'll hand over to you, Roisin, for maybe questions from there in. Thanks very much, Breen, for that presentation. It's very informative and detailed, and I hope those who've attended are uh, satisfied that there's lots of detail in there for them. Um, we do have some questions coming in. Just a reminder before we start answering them that if you'd like to put your question in, you just enter it in the Q&A box on the, uh, in the top right-hand corner of the screen. As I said, all the questions are being read, and uh, we'll try and get through as many as possible. We have a number of them here, uh, and those that we don't get to will be um, read to the project team and considered um, in their work in the coming weeks. Um, so with that, uh, without wasting any further time, we'll use as much time as we can for a quick Q&A, so I'm going to go straight into it. Uh, Breen, the first question here is going to go to you, which is why are you introducing a roundabout on St Cronin's Road on the plans that this person has seen? Well, Roisin, the reason, main reason is as you're coming out on the junction out onto St Cronin's, um, onto the road, the sight lines are very poor on both sides. 
So it's really to improve junction safety, not only for the motorists, but basically for anybody crossing the road as well. Also, there's a sp speed reduction required there as regards to try and control the speed. An awful lot of the traffic wants to come round and up the hill there. The speeds are quite excessive. Now, I might hand over to Chris maybe for a little further on maybe the design of it and, and, and the choices there of what we're looking at. I suppose for the Ron Bunnelski in his space, it's uh, as Brian indicates, a really at the start. The strategy is to try and slow down the traffic at the minute on the road and make cycling safer for all parties and make them usable for the younger people and the older people. Um, the way the design is done for the for the cycle lane and how the junction is tightened up, the narrow road, as I said, slows down the traffic. And then the Titan Junction will slow down traffic turning turning in now to the Liskian uh, estates. Um, the reason we put in the mini roundabout there is it's not a main roundabout, which would be more for traffic and directing traffic, but the mini roundabout is purely a traffic calming measure. Um, it's to assist, <coughs> I suppose we have a raised table from now, Liskian estates as well, to assist the, um, the pedestrians to cross the road. It also gives them uh, the cars come out of the estates and going into the estates, uh, uh, an indication that there is a risk there. And then the mini roundabouts allows cars coming out of the estates also to get right away um, if they're turning right, which makes it safer for all parties as well. Um, I think owner Deirdre is running a mist or? No, I, I think you've captured it fine. I think it's just important to note that distinction between a roundabout and a mini roundabout. A roundabout is a large junction and it can pose issues for cyclists and pedestrians. A mini roundabout is just another form of priority junction and it's a traffic calming device. So as Breen mentioned, it will assist the, um, it'll help with visibility, people coming out of the uh, side road there because uh, when there's a bus blocking visibility, it'll still mean that people have to operate it like a roundabout, which is yield to right. So overall, we think it'll lead to an improvement in terms of road safety there. Thanks uh, to Breen, Chris and Owen for their very comprehensive answer there on that question. Uh, so to move on to another question that we've received in, which is well, what are people who need to drop their kids to school in this area supposed to do about parking? Um, obviously, this will impact the parking situation at the school. Breen, can I put that to you first? I suppose the main idea here is that we're trying to create a modal shift, number one. So a lot of the people that are already coming and are parking in this area, they're coming from very close proximity within the greater hinterland. And they're really what we're trying to do is, is to get those people into more active travel modes and utilise uh, the existing cycle lanes in a safer manner and that it provides them with some confidence to use them in the first place. So that in itself actually will reduce some of the traffic volume. The car park at the church as well is quite considerable and is utilised at the moment, but there is spare capacity or we would see a spare capacity from what we've looked at in relation to once people start moving to the, the bicycle and walking to school, um, at least then that'll reduce a lot of the traffic volumes. I suppose maybe I'll just pass across to Owen or Chris's maybe for comment on that as well. You go first on the parking owner. situation, yeah. Yeah, well, no, I mean, I just reiterate what Breen said there. I mean, the, the, the purpose a lot of this, of these interventions that are being made around is to facilitate people getting to school in a safer, more sustainable manner. Um, I mean, all, all of the research indicates that a huge amount of school trips are just drop your kids to school and go home again trips. Obviously, there's a certain amount of pass by trips where people are going a longer distance and do need to take the car for those. But the idea here is to move the shorter distance drop off trips to more sustainable modes. And so by putting in the safe routes and indeed extending throughout the, a, a wider area on the busier roads, it will allow um, parents have that confidence that their children can get to school safely, reducing then the need for parking around the school and leaving what is required for those making longer distance trips who need it. I suppose just to reinforce Owen's point as well is there is a lot of schools at the minute doing safe routes to schools. There's a reason being that a lot of parents feel that the current facilities aren't safe enough for the children, hence the reason for protected cycle 
bike lanes and the like, um, there's a massive amount of parents that would be happy to send their children once they get to a certain age on bikes to schools if the facilities are there to allow us. So really, it's really a strategy to try and push people to use cycle lanes and again, we'll remove the requirement for law parking in cases, in some cases as well. So it's really catching up with what a lot of places are doing at the minute. Again, just maybe to add to that, I suppose we all have a responsibility to reduce our carbon footprint and this is the safer routes to school is a massive intervention to try and reduce that. And from a number of studies that has been done throughout the country with a lot of hands up surveys within the schools, when kids were asked, well, how do you want to come to school? Their answer was they want to either walk to school or cycle to school and some of them even scoot to school. So it leaves to when you look at it from a, a teacher's perspective, the child comes into school a lot more relaxed. They're ready for learning. They've got their exercise when they were going there. So it's a win win situation for everybody. But they're not panicking from jumping out of the car and running to the classroom and wondering, well, did I bring my book or not? They're a more organized child ready to learn by the time they arrive in the classroom. Thanks, Breen, for that. I think we could all welcome the idea of more organised children. I'm sure lots of people would be happy to hear that one. Um, so another question in here now that's coming around the lanes, and the, it's a simple question, I suppose, in the sense it's why are you putting in new lanes now in this area? Um, Breen, I'll come back to you for this if you don't mind. I suppose to reiterate the point, Roisin, these are not new lanes. These are existing cycle lanes that we are looking at on a daily basis. What we are trying to do is make that infrastructure more user friendly for all road users, including the vulnerable road user. And make it more attractive that they have confidence to go and cycle along that route, either with their parents or without them. But not only that, the parent is, would be quite happy to sit at home and know that the child is safe along that route if the traffic volumes are reduced, if the speeds are reduced and the cycle lane is a lot safer. And I think that's where the win is. It, th again, these are not new cycle routes. These are existing cycle routes to be made more safer and footpaths as well to be made to be refurbished within the area. That's great, Breen. Thanks. That's a very helpful clarification. Um, so I'm going to move away from Breen for a minute and give him a break and we'll move to the designers of the scheme um, because we have a question here around uh, St. Cronin School and Swords Manor. So somebody's asked, how can people, especially children cycling from St. Cronin School to Swords Manor, be expected to safely cross at St. Cronin's Avenue and the junction of Brackenstown Road outside the time when there's no crossing guard or lollipop person there? And there's a second part to that question, which is, um, should this road uh, area not be a fully light controlled junction to allow safe crossing for all road users? Um, Deirdre, I might come to you first on this and you can pass then to Owen if you feel he has something to add also. Sure. Um, the, I suppose signalising at that location wasn't envisaged originally in the scope of the design, but um, it's certainly something we can take away and look at with Fingal. I don't think there's anything else really that I know, it's own to you definitely want to add. No, I mean, just that, you know, signalising the junction is a pretty heavy piece of engineering. Uh, that wasn't originally envisaged, but look, uh, as we say, we, it's certainly something we'll take offline and look at again. Thank you both for that. I think actually that's an important point to note for those who maybe aren't familiar with public consultation and haven't been through a process like this before. The part of the reason we're doing this conversation tonight with you and inviting you to tell us your views in the consultation portal is that items like this are up for negotiation to some extent and uh, we're willing to work with people's ideas where they think where they're feasible. Um, so to move on to another question, if somebody here has asked, South Dublin County Council uh, are currently appealing a High Court decision to refuse the proposed Strand Road cycle lane. If they are unsuccessful in that appeal, will it impact this project and projects like the Baldoyle to Malahide cycleway? I think they're referring to the Sutton to Malahide uh, pedestrian and cycle scheme there. Uh, Breen, I might come to you first on this one. I suppose that's an interesting question. We can't, I suppose, apprehend how that decision will go or otherwise, but cycle paths throughout the country are supported through government programme number one and also through the local authorities goals and objectives as well. So I think each case will have to be looked at um, on its own merits. And I suppose it would be unfair to say that this one would be influenced by any decision elsewhere. I don't see it that way. Thanks very much, Breen. Uh, next question has come in is one that I'll answer, which is um, not everyone has access to social media and the information leaflet promised has not been circulated to some estates impacted by the proposed cycle lane. When will this be distributed? 
distributed, pardon me. Um, so I should say the initial drop of the leaflet was done uh, about a week and a half ago and it takes about a week for those to get out. Um, so most people in that first drop should have got it quite early on. Some might have received it towards the end of last week. Uh, we actually, on, on advice from a councillor and advice from those who have let us know that they didn't receive them in area, reviewed them with the leaflet company that we use. Um, and following that decision, there'll be further leaflets distributed in the coming days. So by the end of next week, everyone in the wider area around the scheme should have received a leaflet into their home. And if you have not at that point, please do let us know um, either through the submission portal or through email to active travel at and we'd be very happy to send one to you directly. Um, for those who are interested in the content of it and maybe have not seen it up close yet, it is available in full on the website, either to download and print off if you'd like to, um, or to view it on screen. And that's fingal.ie forward slash active travel forward slash St. Cronin's Avenue. Um, so I'll move on to the next question now, which is, um, I'm going to put this to Owen. Owen, the mini roundabout at Liskeen will encourage higher speeds for traffic entering that estate and a safe crossing is required for pedestrians and cyclists from the path across, running across the top of Dale View to access the cycle lanes and safely cross to the road to the bus stops. Have you any comment to make around that? Well, I, I would reiterate that a mini roundabout is a traffic calming device. Um, so I, I mean, I can't see how the how putting an additional piece of traffic calming would speed traffic up. Uh, and there's also a ramp just um, at the entrance to Liskin there. Um, there are a series of uncontrolled crossings across um, St Cronin's Avenue. Uh, it, it, it's a valid point in relation to crossing at that location. There's a bus stop there as well. So again, maybe some, look, that's something we'll take away. Have another look at, see is there a case to put a, a more um, formalised crossing in this vicinity? Thanks, Owen. Um, the next question is, will there be raised curbs along the edges of the segregated cycle lane similar to those currently in place in the River Valley and Rathingle cycle scheme? Uh, I might come back to you, Owen, with an answer on that, please. Um, no, there won't in this instance. The, the, the bollards are being used as the primary uh, segregation. Thanks for that clarification. I hope that's answered the um, person who queried um, sufficiently. Uh, so the next question is going to go to Breen and that's, I'm wondering, is Noxodan Estate ever going to be included in any of these upgrade programmes? Uh, we'd love to have access to Swords Manor so we too can walk our kids um, or cycle them to school. Breen, would you like to come in on that and maybe fill us in a little bit on other plans? I suppose, unfortunately, we can't include everything in this scheme because we'd have a never ending boundary or red line boundary around our site. But yes, I do see the merit of it there, and that is something that we would look at in the future again with the NDA to see can we secure funding, but unfortunately not on this run. Thanks very much, Breen. Um, so um, the next question is around um, the bike lane inside the tree lane at St Cronin's Avenue, which is, was consideration given to putting the bike lane inside the tree lane on St Cronin's Avenue south of Ardkeen Park, given that there may be space available there? This uh, The questioner says this would be best practice in Netherlands to have a grass strip between the bike lane and the road where possible and would potentially be a more permanent solution over bollards. Um, I'll come to the design team here and um, perhaps owner Deirdre might like to come in on this one. Yeah, I can come in on that one. Um, I suppose it's not entirely clear on the plans, but there is a grass strip between the cycle lane and the road. Um, if we were to try and put the cycle track between the trees, it would mean that we would have to move the pedestrian um, footpaths elsewhere. Um, and there's also a risk that we could actually kill some of the trees by going too close to their their root protection area. So it was um, we felt it better to move it away from the trees, but there is a grass strip between the road and the two way cycle track where, where it's available if there is a green strip. Yeah, and maybe just to add to that in relation to on um, St Cronin's Avenue itself, um, there are sections where you could accommodate that, but then there are longer sections where you couldn't. Um, and so you'd end up with this unsatisfactory arrangement crisscrossing the footpath. So uh, we, we we felt that, you know, upgrading and enhancing the existing facility was the best approach on, on St Cronin's Avenue. Thank you both very much for that information. Uh, so the next question I'm going to put to Chris, which is, could you please expand a little more on the junction upgrades at Berwick, Swords Manor and Ormond? What will these upgrades involve? And could you expand on the junction upgrades? Um, sorry, I realise the question is repeated in the Q&A box, but can we give a little bit more information about what those up junk junction upgrades will look like? Thanks, Chris. Yeah, I suppose all, all the junction upgrades will be relatively similar. Um, as I said previously in the scheme, they're all, they're all going to have raised tables and they're all going to have the tactile systems as well for visually impaired people. 
Um, all the radiuses and the junctions will be tightened up uh, a lot. Um, initially, in, in the initial, you'll see a variance in uh, radiuses is radiuses in junctions going into states and that they're too wide, which uh, allows cars to approach them probably too fast, 40, 50 kilometers an hour. We will be tightening them up to a much tighter radius and people will notice the difference. Um, reason being, uh, you basically have to slow down to 25, 30 kilometers an hour on the main road to take your left turn in. It'll it'll help slow the traffic down in the main thoroughfare. Um, it'll make it safer for people that are crossing the road as well as crossing the junctions. It'll make it more acceptable to visually impaired as well as disabled people or people using wheelchairs. I suppose another clear reason as well is for cyclists are cycling in the cycle lane. If a car is going in on a wide angle, they're going in, say, 20 degree, 30 degree to the to the junction, which a cyclist won't be able to see over their shoulder because the junctions are tightened up so far so much, you, you, you more or less have to be on top of the junction to turn in, which will also give cyclists a, a better chance in the case there is going to be a crash or anything like that to try and avoid the car and vice versa for the car to actually see the cyclist also. So it's it's traffic calming and it's making it safe for every everybody, cars, vehicles, cyclists, pedestrians and everything that can 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 be in it basically. And it'll be the similar, it'll be a similar upgrade and matching upgrade for all the junctions along Brecon Sound as well as um, St. Cronin's. Very similar to what we're doing in other projects at the minute around Fingal and other council areas. That's very helpful. Thanks, Chris. Um, the next question that's come in is around the cycle lane at the school, and the questioner has asked, will the cycle lane from the school to St. Cronin's Avenue be a segregated one? Um, the design team might like to come in here. Owner Deirdre, would you like to take this one, please? We can, yeah. So um, where space is available, it will be segregated. Mute, Apologies, folks. We just seem to have a small technical sorry, glitch there. Sorry, Did you mind starting that again? Muted, sorry. That's fine. Thank um, you. Yeah, we, the plan is to segregate as best we can. There are a few local pinch points where we um, couldn't get full segregation, but the scheme is all about segregating cyclists um, as best we can. And, and just for absolute clarity, it's fully segregated from the road traffic. Uh, and it is generally separate to the pedestrian way, but there's one or two areas where it has to run next to the existing path. Thank you both very much for that answer. And the next question is around lighting, and I'm going to put this to um, Chris. Will the lighting be improved along the new path towards the school? The current path is very dark in winter time, and lighting would improve the um, experience for users in that area. Chris, have any comment to add there? I suppose the the proposed two way cycle lane will be predominantly lit by the um, the current lights in the road system and um, the existing pedestrian area hasn't been discussed today so it has been discussed but hasn't really been a uh, pause out I suppose today and um, it is something that we're looking at at the moment with Fingal and uh, we're going to review it in due course and see what the use is and what's required there I suppose and if that can be accommodated between the two pathways is probably the best option. So just to clarify, Chris, does that mean that the lighting decision for that particular area has maybe not been solidified yes. yet? Hasn't been decided yet, no. We, we That's perfect, that, thanks. Actually. We can clarify that. But what we will be looking at is see what 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 is required on the inner path from uh, where the pedestrians are. And then, as Chris has said, the outer path where the two-way cycle path is in the green area, there seems to be a substantial light from the existing road lights that's there. Thank you both very much for that. Uh, so the next question that's come in is again for the design team and it is, was consideration given to a Dutch type roundabout at the junction of St. Coronas Avenue and Brackenton Avenue? This might facilitate safe walking and cycling routes, but also reduce the delay for cars turning right into St. Coronas Avenue, um, uh, sorry, from St. Coronas Avenue onto Brackenstown Avenue and could calm car speeds in the on the Brackenstown area in this location. Um, owner Deirdre, would you like to come in here with comment on that? Yeah, well, I, just, I suppose just to reiterate, uh, rushing on that one, that junction or a significant upgrade to that junction was not something we looked at initially. Uh, and it, it is something we discuss again, but I think 
um, uh, to put in a Dutch style roundabout there would be a, a, a very big project, far larger than the scale of anything else we're looking at here. And that if anything extra would were to be done, I would imagine it's more likely it would just be a, a, a wider signalisation of the junction. But it's, it is something we'll discuss at and we would have to look at all of the options if if investigating any upgrade. I, I suppose as well, Roisin, just as, as Breen led to earlier, we're, we're making the current facilities usable and safer for all parties. We haven't really gone to the position of doing a massive redesign of the junctions and as the one says, the Dutch style roundabouts is a massive undertaking. Just to, add to, just to add to that as well, Roisin, there, there is two uh, dwellings that come out very close to that junction, which would interfere with possibly a Dutch style there. So there's massive considerations to be looked at in relation to that proposal. OK, thank you all very much for that clarification. That's very helpful. I'm sure the questioner will be satisfied with that answer for now. Um, so before I move on to any more questions, I just want to issue a brief reminder for anyone who may be joining the session a little bit later that the Q&A box is in the top hand, right hand corner of your screen and that we'd very much welcome your questions. We've gotten through quite a number of them so far um, and I think we're probably coming close to having uh, all of the questions in, but please do add your question or comment in if you'd like us to get to it today. Uh, so with that, I'll move on to the next question, which is going to go to Breen. Is there any scope in this project to have a footpath and a cycle lane through Deliskian via Glassmore Abbey to Swords Community College and Broadmeadows Community National School on the new Moortown site? Currently, it's a two and a half kilometre detour for children walking and cycling to those new schools. Breen, could you like to make some comment there? Uh, that's something we would have looked at, Roisin, already, but the problem is uh, those lands aren't fully developed and we're waiting on planning permissions to come in there, which would, uh, which would interfere with this scheme. So really, we cannot include it within the scope of this project because all of the lands are not in public ownership. Sabrina, just to clarify, does that mean if you were to wait for including something like that in the scheme, would that potentially allow for large delays in this scheme? It would allow for large delays because you're relying on, on developer involvement here and the developer as well coming on board and the houses to be built. So but, um, but it doesn't mean that it might not be a bit away the future. Where, where, we, where we would see this is this could be some add on to the future and it has been looked at through the planning process for that piece of land. Thanks, that's very helpful. Um, so the next question that's come in is again for the design team, which is there doesn't appear to be a bus stop bypass in the, in the designs for bike lanes. And um, this, the person who believes this is certainly a risk at St. Crowns Avenue, given the speeds that motor vehicles are known to travel at in the area and has asked, could they possibly be included in the design? Owen or Deirdre, would you like to take this one? Um, I'll take that one. Bus stop bypasses are not without their issues. There's still no agreed standard for them here. Um, also, it is it would be considerably larger um, piece of engineering work at each location uh, than you know the safety enhancement of existing facilities, which is what we're primarily looking at at the moment. Um, the 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 current standard for such um, arrangements on a road such as St. Conan's Avenue is to do as we have indicated which would allow a cyclist or a more confident cyclist to overtake a stopped bus uh, in a safe manner and other cyclists to wait and continue along with them. Um, it is something that could perhaps be revisited at some point in the future, but at the moment the bus stop bypasses are only being considered on the extremely busy roads. And as I say, there's still not an agreed standard for putting them in. Thanks, Owen. Um, could I ask you to just clarify briefly what a bus stop bypass is for maybe those who are unfamiliar with it? Obviously, the commenter was familiar, but not lots of people on the call may not be. Yeah, that, that's a fair point, Roisin. A bus stop bypass, uh, I assume what the question was referring to, would be where you move the bus stop out against the traffic lane and then you take the cycle lane in and around behind it. Um, but that does raise um, other issues in relation to accessibility to the bus stop itself in particular for um, those visual or mobility impaired persons who can find it difficult to negotiate the cycle track to get to the bus stop. So it would introduce a whole load of additional design complications into the scheme, which in turn would no doubt entail additional delays getting it implemented. If I could just add to that as well, the second part of the question asked about the um, given the motor speed, the speeds motors, motors travel at. The whole scheme is designed to reduce motorist speeds um, through traffic hamming, so that should help as well within the design. 
Thanks, Deirdre and Owen, for that clarification and the inform further information. Pardon me, we just have a small technical hit. There we go. And um, so just a brief reminder that if you want to put a question, you can type it into the Q&A box, which is in the top right hand corner. I think we've actually come to the end of the list of questions that's coming in from attendees this evening. Um, hopefully those of you who have attended have found it helpful and useful and have found our answers um, both open and um, comprehensive. So we'll start to wrap up with that. Um, I know it's a little bit earlier than intended, but um, as we said, we've gone through all the questions. If you do have a question afterwards that you didn't get a chance to ask, please do um, raise a submission. So you can do that by visiting www.consult.fingal.ie. This is the place where you can make clear your views and your comments around the scheme, and you can share with us um, any questions or concerns that you have um, around the work that's proposed for the area. And as I said, all of the design, detailed design drawings, a copy of the leaflet and any further information around the scheme is available there to view in detail. Um, thank you very much to those of you who have submitted questions and comments tonight and um, we're very pleased to have people engaged with the conversation around the scheme and we really want to make this as high quality a facility as possible that benefits as many people in the area as possible and your engagement will make that um, something that is possible for everybody. Um, the recording of this webinar will be made available on the website which is fingal.ie forward slash active travel forward slash St Cronin's Avenue and that'll be up there in the next couple of days. Uh, my sincere thanks to the planning team and their consultants for joining us this evening and for giving so generously of their time to answer all of your questions and Thanks also to Daniel Deason who produced this webinar this evening. Please remember that if you do intend to make a submission and tell us what you think about the scheme, you must do so before 23.59 hours, that's a minute to midnight on April 22nd. Um, submissions can be made at consult.fingal.ie, as I said, and if you uh, would rather make a submission offline, all of the information around being able to make a postal submission, which can be made alternatively, is also available on that website. Um, thank you very much to all of those who have joined us and to the team. Um, with that, we'll close the webinar. Good night. <laughs>